Good morning, everybody. I'm Christine here at the Fort Worth Zoo, and we are gonna talk about our food chain today and how some of our animals play a role in that food chain. And the food chain is such a really large part and we all fit in different places in that food chain. So we might have animals that are herbivores where they eat plants or omnivores that eat plants and animals, carnivores like Darwin here who only eats meat. Then of course you have insectivores that only eat bugs or insects. Frugivores are a really fancy way to say you eat nothing but fruit. Um, we have pescivores that eat only fish, and maybe some of you guys at home might be uh, vegetarians or pescivores or maybe even frugivores, some of you that don't like to eat your vegetables. <laughs> so there are all sorts of animals that fall in that role. And then of course, there are the animals that have to eat maybe the yucky stuff too, like scavengers, and they eat all the dead stuff and, and that not everybody else wants to eat. And of course, also our decomposers that are really important. They help break down all that plant matter that's on the ground so that we don't have it around. But let's talk a little bit about Darwin here, who is actually from Australia. So we here in Texas might have owls in our backyards, but frog mouse, tawny frog mouse, are found in the backyards of Australians. And they're a really neat bird uh, that would sit on the fence posts or in the trees. And you can see he has such an am excellent camouflage to help him to blend into that tree. So what he would normally do in the wild, and he's showing you right now, now is he likes to stump or he likes to pretend to be a tree branch and he uses that coloration to help blend into the trees so it's really hard to see them during the daytime which is when they are sleeping or being restful so this is an animal that is nocturnal and nocturnal just means that they hunt for their food at night they might still be awake during the day sometimes but they're gonna be actively hunting at night for that food and I told you earlier he is a carnivore Carnivores eat meat. Darwin likes to hunt for a couple of different kinds, but he's not a bird of prey. So the owls we have here in Texas are birds of prey, which means they're excellent hunters. Um, he can hunt things that maybe aren't quite as fast. So he's gonna hunt a lot of bugs, um, like worms, caterpillars, um, moths, but he also does catch small mice that maybe aren't as quick as some of the other ones. Um, so he's actually going to use his frog mouth to hunt for his food. So he actually will fly to the ground and pick everything up with his mouth and then he will swallow it whole. So he can't tear his food like a raptor or a bird of prey. Um, everything he eats has to already be small enough for him to swallow. So that's why he's called a frog mouth because he has a big wide mouth like a frog and frogs eat bugs. So easy to kind of tell what he might eat because of his name really helps him out with that. And he does have those kind of whisker-like feathers on the top of his beak because sometimes when he's sitting super still, he can feel if insects are crawling close to him. You guys, if you go outside to a tree near your house and you look really closely, you'll find bugs crawling on that tree. And so if he's being super still like a tree, they might crawl on him too. And he can use those little whisker feathers to help him to just eat it up so he doesn't have to even go out there. So Darwin's really great at practicing social distancing. <laughs> um, so he spent a lot of time in the trees but he also does help take care of his babies um, so both the male and the female will lay a kind of haphazard stick nest in the branches and uh, they will both help hang out so his job would be go get some food for her he'll go catch it bring it back and feed the mother and then she can go out and hunt during the daytime when he helps take care of the nest so they are very active and helping out with their family um, so this was our carnivore friend. We want you to meet another type of animal that fits somewhere else in the food chain. So he's about to come on in. So if you guys say good night to Darwin, since it's technically his bedtime, we're gonna put him back to bed and we'll be right back with another animal. Hello, so I am here with my friend Santiago and Santiago is a chestnut fronted macaw, also known as a severe macaw. They are also considered to be mini macaws um, but there's nothing many about them. They actually have a really huge personality and a lot of requirements. Um, being one of the smaller macaws, he is considered a herbivore. You ready? He's like, who are these people? This is not normal. You wanna do a little fight? That's okay. So Santiago here did just have his breakfast. So you might notice if I, let's see, switch him around. He's got a little bit of food on his beak. He just finished eating some breakfast. Um, and so his breakfast uh, is made up of fruits, veggies, um, and he also gets like a pelleted formula. Um, and his pellets are perfectly 
made for parrots. So just like you get dog food at home for your dog or cat food for your cat, parrots get specific food that's made for parrots too. So it gets all their nutritional requirements into them in one easy formula. Um, and Santiago is native to South America. So they are gonna be found in the Amazon rainforest. Um, and they've got this special beak that is perfect for their role in the food chain. Like I said, they are herbivores, specifically frugivores. So their diet is gonna be made up of fruits and nuts and seeds. And he's showing you off some of his, can you do your wings? His wing behavior, good job. Um, and so they will eat all kinds of things there, but their beak is perfect for cracking through those really tough nuts and seeds. And not only is that uh, a great diet for him, but it's actually really important for the rainforest as well. So he can actually disperse seeds over large distances and birds are gonna be much better at dispersing those seeds than some other animals are. And the reason being is because they can fly. You wanna try flying now? No, that's okay. <laughs> So Santiago uh, is trained to do a lot of different behaviors, but just like at home, parents, you probably can relate. When you ask your kids to do something, sometimes they don't want to and that's okay. So we use positive reinforcement with our animals here, which means if they do something we ask them to do or something we would like for them to do, um, they do get reinforced with a high value treat. In the case of Santiago, he gets seeds. Uh, however, if he doesn't really want to for whatever reason, like I said, he did just eat, so he's probably feeling a little bit heavy right now. That's totally acceptable too. He'll have other opportunities throughout the day to do those behaviors for us and earn rewards that way. Otherwise, he just kind of hangs out at home and he did have some really fun enrichment in his, in his home just now. So he was probably having a really fun time playing with his toys. So he might be a little like, mm, why'd you take me away from my fun stuff, mom? Um, yeah, so if you guys want to know anything more about food chains, we will hopefully be doing some more of these here at the Fort Worth Zoo to keep you guys in touch here with us at the Fort Worth Zoo. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your time at home with your families and thank you and have a good day.